Well, folks, there's been an update to the firmware on the Pentax K1. Can you believe it? Finally, an update, like a, a good update, not just one of those like, hey, here's a little update for, you know, stabilization of the software, you know, like the background update or, you know, something for lenses. No, this is like a feature enhancement update. Now, before you get too excited about running over to Pentax to get that firmware update, let's talk about it first, because there may be some reasons why you may not necessarily want it. And I want to make sure that if you do, you get the right one because the firmware update they came out with in December, it didn't go all that well. In fact, for a lot of people, it broke some stuff, which I find is very unusual from Pentax. But hey, everybody has a bad day. It's totally fine. They they pulled it. Uh, it was version 2.4 zero so if you see the firmware update and that's the number on it you don't want that one the good news is they have since fixed it and released a new update that will fix anybody who downloaded the other one but if you did not download that old one then this is the one that you want also it'll bring you right up to standard but what did it include well two words for you astro tracer is that one word i i don't know but having shot with the k1 since 2017 and still loving everything that I get out of it. It's exciting to see a firmware update that came out for a camera that, well, I've been shooting with for almost seven years at this point, and it's been out for almost eight years. Uh, just amazing. So let's talk about what that December update was supposed to bring to the table. So the last firmware update that came out was 2.30, and that was over the summer of 2023. So here comes version 2.4, and it, it doesn't look like a really long list. So you'd think, ah, there's not much going on there. But if you look down to the second point, added Astro Tracer Type 2 and Type 3, click here for details. And then, of course, you've got you know, something for a lens and then some general stability functions that they throw into every update. But what does that mean? What are you going to get out of Astro Tracer 2 and 3? So let's have a look at the actual description from the Pentax website. Now, Astro Tracer Type 2 and 3 might be old news for some of the folks out there shooting with other Pentax models, but for the K1 crowd, the K1 Mark 1 crowd like me, this is completely new and it may solve a couple problems that I've run into. It could create a couple other problems. So right off the bat, they tell you that going forward, Astro Tracer Type 1 is the, the name that's been assigned to the Astro Tracer you're probably used to. You know, the one where you calibrate your camera when you get where you're going, you spin it on the three axes, you, you put it in there and then you're, you're good to track. That's exactly what I've been using for the last several years. I've been totally thrilled with it. But here's what they've added. This is really interesting. So type two is going to essentially work just like type one, but it's going to slow down. It's going to slow down the movement of the sensor a little bit. So why would you want to do that? Those of you who have used standard Astro Tracer, or for that matter, like any tracker out there, you know that the biggest issue later in terms of uh, processing is taking the foreground and the stars and smushing them together in, in a shot. And it can be very hard to layer those together because obviously when you're doing astro tracing, your foreground is now moving. It looks like it's moving. So you're getting blurries. That's my technical term, blurries. And where that comes into a big problem is, especially if you've got something that breaks the horizon. So if if you're out shooting just a flat horizon and nothing in the foreground, you're, you're fine. It doesn't matter. It's easy. But if you're like me and you've got a lighthouse or a telephone pole or some wires going by, those blurries make everything a lot thicker. So you could end up with a telephone pole that's twice as wide because of the movement. Then you bring in the shot you took for the foreground. And how are you going to layer all that in there? Well, there's ways around it but it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, especially when you're dealing with tree branches and leaves and things like that. So this is where Astro Tracer Type 2 may help you with that to some degree. Astro Tracer Type 3 is where it gets really interesting. So this is right from the website, and there's three key words in here that I want to highlight. But the first sentence says, a simplified equatorial function that enables to track and capture celestial bodies. Here are those three words without using GPS. That's huge. That's huge. Now, that helped out a ton of people 
when they had a different Pentax body with Astro Tracer that required the GPS connection. This unlocked that feature for them. It was like a, you know, just like a free unlock. Congratulations, you're out doing Astro Tracer. Awesome, right? Now, you've got a K1. It's got the GPS built in. It's probably working fine. Why would you consider having that Type 3? Why would you even need it? Okay, well, there's a couple different reasons. First off, maybe you're someone who is just in a really big hurry and you don't want to go through the calibration. You spin it on those three axes, like I mentioned, and you're up and running. And for me, it may take one to two minutes before I get it. You have to spin it at a certain speed. You can't be really fast with it. You got to just be really careful and then it's fine. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to recalibrate every time you go to a new location. You don't have to. Astro Tracer will flip on and it'll say it's working and it'll do its thing. But you probably want to do it at every location just so that you get the best astro tracing possible from your camera. Now, there's another situation that you may run into, and it's written right here in the paragraph describing Astro Tracer 3. And I, I think this has probably happened to everybody at least once. So, feature eliminates GPS positioning wait time and able to shoot in locations subject to previously troublesome magnetic fields. There it is. Maybe you've been out trying to spin your camera around to get that Astro Tracer to lock properly and it's failing, it's failing, it's failing, it's failing. You're getting mad at your camera. You're getting mad at yourself. Whatever's going on may not be anything you're doing wrong or anything wrong with the camera. It could just be a magnetic field. You could be on a weird rock bed. You could be near power lines, anything that's going to disrupt that ability. I know that in the places that I frequently shoot, there are certain areas where I just cannot get Astro Tracer to work properly unless I move over a little bit uh, or just hope that it carries over from a location I calibrated at a few miles away. Those are my only options. So this would eliminate that. That's great news, but it works a little differently. So let's go back and read this again because I think this is really key. Before actual shooting, a preliminary shot is captured automatically, enabling celestial body tracking from the star movements. How cool is that? That Your Pentax is looking at the night sky and then just figuring out at what speed it needs to move because it's doing an evaluation. That's amazing. I think that's really cool. Here's where it gets a little bit dicey. As the star movements are being captured on an image, Astro Tracer's auto tracking function may fail. When objects other than stars, such as clouds, and I'm assuming planes, because we all have to deal with planes, enter into the image field. Okay, well, everything has a weakness. Everything has a price that you have to pay. There's not a get out of jail free card on, on swip, switching from one version to another of Astro Tracer. There's always going to be something. That is the something, apparently. I get a lot of planes that fly over where I live. Uh, there's a lot of flight lines nearby. So every five minutes, something's coming by. Maybe Astro Tracer Type 3 won't really notice something that small. Maybe it's doing a whole evaluation of the night sky, sees one thing moving at a different speed. Maybe it won't matter. Clouds, I can understand. Typically, they're going to come through. They're going to be big. They're going to start obscuring some of what Astro Tracer is presumably looking at. And that could be an issue. So which one is, is best for you? Well, honestly, I have no problem with Astro Tracer Type 1. It's been working great for me. Even in the places where the whole magnetic field thing comes into play, which could affect your GPS too, obviously. I really haven't run into too many situations where it, it's failed me or it's at least disappointed me. Um, I don't think it's ever just completely failed me. So there's that. Should you install the update? Well, 2.41, when you read the description on the update to the update, you'll understand what it previously broke. Sadly, the list of things that it had to correct in the firmware update was longer than the list of added features in the last firmware update. Let's look at some of these. Corrected images cannot be recorded when Astro Tracer Type 3 mode is combined with the interval shooting function. Okay, yeah, I would imagine some people use that functionality, and uh, it would be a real bummer if I went out and took a bunch of photos, or thought I took a bunch of photos, and they didn't actually get stuck to the memory card. That would be a major bummer. Corrected, the SD card slot indicators 1 and 2 in the upper left. 
flash to indicate that the memory capacity is empty, even when some space is still available. Yeah, I could see why that would be a problem, which also makes sense why this next problem popped up corrected. The number of remaining shots available incorrectly displayed in the viewfinder. Yeah, seems like it goes hand in hand, some sort of weird calculation there. I generally find that it's important to know how much space I have left on my memory cards to a pretty accurate degree. Lastly, Astro Tracer Type 3 mode, the exposure countdown on the upper LCD panel advances at unintended moments? Okay, so I'm imagining that it's counting in strange intervals or gets frozen and then jumps for a number. That's kind of strange. But regardless, the new update should have fixed all of this. So back to that question. Should you update? I feel like we live in this world where we're all public beta testers for a lot of companies and these types of things happen. And I used to run out and get an update. As soon as somebody said, hey, there's an update for this, or an update for that, I'd, I'd grab it immediately. But I've kind of gotten away from doing that with hardware that's not connected to the internet, things that aren't necessarily going to be a security update uh, or worry, let's say. You may look at this list of added features, Astro Tracer 2 and 3, and decide that it doesn't really impact your life. It doesn't matter. And if you don't use Astro Tracer for anything on your Pentax, then you're fine where you are. Don't feel completely compelled to go grab this update just because there's an update there because you may not need it and everything's working fine. If you use Astro Tracer and you've got the K1, do you need this update based on how you use Astro Tracer? Well, maybe it'd be fun to try out two or three modes just to see how they work. But again, if you're happy with where things are going, you don't have to update. The bottom line is this, at least they're still coming out with updates for a camera that's going on eight years old, which is fantastic. And thank you Pentax for doing that. I didn't update mine. I might, I've got two bodies. I might throw it on one and just see how it works and just do some testing and, and experiment a little bit because I am a little bit curious about it. But if I don't get around to it in the next couple of weeks or even the next few months, eh, it's fine. Did you install the update on your Pentax? And if you did, how did it go? Tell us about it. I'm really curious to hear from people about the type two and type three. And, and maybe you're somebody with a different body who's been using that already. How's it worked for you? Did, did you find it useful? Did type two make it easier to process your stacked images? Did type three work as intended? Did planes sabotage you? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for watching. Happy updating if you decide to do it. And I hope to see you out there after dark. Take care. Hey folks, it's Tim Little and the 2024 night photography workshop season has been announced and is fully available for your viewing at capecodworkshops.com. We've got Milky Way, Moonlight, Shooting Stars, Christmas Lights, and a whole lot more. I added six new adventures for this year, bringing the total to like 17. All skill levels are welcome, whether it's a, a multi-night or a single night, or maybe not even on Cape Cod. There's something there for everybody. Please check it out at capecodworkshops.com. Hope to see you out there after dark.